Hello! In today's video we will chat with Llama 2 using Gradius new module chat interface and in one of my previous videos I showed you how to prompt a chat with uh, Llama 2 but the previous video wasn't like the perfect example of that because we didn't really create a chatbot we only got responses from Llama 2 but today we will really create a fully functional chat that will let you ask Lama2 and get responses and we will run all the code in Colab notebook so you can just copy this notebook and uh, run it by yourself and it's all on the free tire so uh, you don't have to pay anything for that uh, in Colab and you will see like the fully fully functional chat so Let's just dive in. Let's move to the project then. Uh, so this is the first pre-step that may be required because uh, I had troubles upgrading Gradio and running this cell and then restarting the runtime has solved that problem. So if you've got troubles running this cell, just get back to this one, uh, uncomment, run it and restart runtime uh, sorry so let's start with the basic installations they are for uh, the hugging face transformers torch and accelerate okay we've got it and now let's try to install the newest version of radio like i said we will use this chat interface uh, which is very, very convenient for chatting with large language models. Gradio 3.42 is installed. We will need uh, access to the model on Hugging Face and this link will lead you to Hugging Face, uh, Llama 27B and you either already have the access to that or you're going to see this message and it will send you to the meta website and on the meta website you will see this short form you just fill it with uh, basic information if you don't know what to put in uh, organization just write personal and then just you will definitely need this one optional this one and it may take a couple of minutes uh, for getting the access yeah, but this is necessary to uh, to, to get our uh, to to use uh, Llama too. Uh, so the next step will be hugging face login. That's also the requirement, and it gives you this link. You just click on it, and then copy. Go to this token, paste it. Then you choose no and i'm successfully logged in and just as just to ensure i always call this who am i and this is my username okay the next step is uh, loading uh, the model and tokenizer uh, so in this step we just define the model which we're going to use and as i showed you before this is we're going to use this uh, Llama 27B chat hugging face. Uh, so I'm running this one. And then we will, we just need to tokenize. We, uh, but luckily, uh, hugging face has this auto tokenizer um, module. So we can just use it for any model. And the next big step is just creating the Llama pipeline. So like the pipeline for any model, but because we we're using pipeline, that's where, uh, because we're using Llama, this is where we define the model again. And uh, pipelines have so many different tasks. And for our project, we will use this text generation. And let me just run this cell because that's what it really takes a lot of time and i get back to you once it's all loaded okay awesome the model is now loaded as you can see over three minutes to run this cell 
and I'll move to the next step, which will be at this point, I will kind of repeat what I have already shown you in one of the previous videos, how to get basic responses from Llama 2. And this is uh, pretty much the same function I've used in this other video. Let me just initialize the function. And in this function, we are using sequences with Llama pipeline, which we've just defined here. And it will uh, generate responses. So let me just uh, call it with hi, this is my name. Okay, <laughs> so this is this answer is very, very uh, funny, but it shows also the other point that I want really want to mention in this video, but it uh, deserves a separate video on how to actually prompt Llama. But okay, so I just introduced myself and it's given me like advice on how to get your ex back. <laughs> so uh, not really what I expected. And I'm asking what's my name. And let's see. My name is Jack. Okay, that's really interesting, to be honest. Uh, so like in the previous video, I just my goal was to show you how to produce answers from Llama 2, but it wasn't really, really conversational. And right now you can you can really see that. So it doesn't know it, it came up with, with my name. We like it it's made up my name, which isn't my name. So this is a very, very bad example of on how to use Llama 2. And so here are some drawbacks of, of this solution is like, there's no history and you can't really customize it. And it's definitely not ready to use it as a chatbot. And yeah, as you can see, it just keeps generating, keeps generating like text without even me wanting it. So the idea for this video is to show you first how to improve prompts. And this is like the right structure of Llama 2 prompts. And I will send you the link in the description uh, to the Hugging Face blog post where I got it from. But in general, uh, like your like user message is between the tokens of INST and INST and this is like this token is a start uh, this is the start of the sentence and this is the end of the sentence but uh, but in this case sentence is like a piece of text and in the first and this is like user defined so what you give to the uh, to the chatbot and in the first message you just want to define the system prompt, which is also something I, I really want to talk about later, but not in this video. But this is the right way of prompting Llama 2, because this is how Llama 2 was fine-tuned. And this is really important in order to get the right responses or like the more precise and correct responses, not like this garbage that I got here. And excuse me, I need to edit something. Okay. And for this project, we will also use Gradio and Gradio has this chat interface with the message and the history. And the message is your like last message. And the history is the history of like user input, uh, ch uh, chatbot response, user input, chatbot response. So it's a list of tuples, uh, like I just uh, wrote it here. So like your first message and then the bot answer and then your second message and then the bot answer. So of course, at the beginning of the conversation, the history is empty. Uh, so when the history is empty, we just want to use our system prompt, which in our case is basic. You are a helpful bot. Your answers are clear and concise, uh, which is 
and I'm using this structure like S and INST like from here like if you can see like this first line corresponds to this line and then I use my system prompt and close the system prompt with this token and like mm, and again in this format message function I just like if the history is empty it means I have I hadn't sent any message yet. I want to initialize my system prompt and my and my message, which is my first query, first prompt. And then I want to close it with this uh, closing INST tag, which is again here, because I will send my user message and close with INST. And this is wrong. This is not supposed to be here. I'm sorry. Uh, this is only after I'm closing the sentence or only after the response from from chat. Mm. Yeah, and then I'm building like the formatted message because when we will when we later prompt the llama, we will always send the whole history. Because when we are used to, when using ChatGPT, this is normal for us that ChatGPT remembers the history of our conversation un until we don't really exceed the context length. But in such models, like in open uh, source models, when our context length grows, uh, when our conversation gets longer, we actually save the whole conversation in the history and we pass when when we send for example the third message to our llama we don't just send the third message we send the whole history and this is why this history is so useful here and this is why um, when we handle the conversation history we actually format message using all the previous user messages and bot answers except from the first one, because we we uh, we define the first one here. And OK, and this is the the newest message that we're sending. OK, awesome. Let's run this function and. Yeah, and then we need a another function to get responses from Llama because this is only how we format the prompt that we will send to our model, which means that we define like we use this message history and the current message. And this is only giving us what we will send to, to the Llama model. And yeah, so this get Llama response again uses this message in history and the first thing uh, what which we do is we update the query which is basically what this function returns and then we've got this response which is basically what our llama responds uh, what what the llama model will respond to us in each like turn of the conversation and this is uh, really based on this function from the previous video with the small change that we're not using prompt, we're using our the whole query. And then again, we generate sequences and the response, we just want to the, uh, the response from the model, not the query, and this is, uh, how we just remove our prompt or our query from, from the response because those open source models or this solution uh, with sequences, uh, it, it responds also with the user input. So it means Lama's respond would give you both your query and its answer. And we 
we don't want to see both in its uh, responses this is so this is how we get rid of our of the user input and then uh, it just uh, returns the response so let me just initialize this function and then where the whole ui magic happens is with gradio and its powerful new fee, new model module for chat interface so let me just run it and as as the only parameter it takes function that we want to use and this this is our function and as i said like radio automatically sends this message in history uh, that's why we don't initialize this function with those two message history parameters they are automatically passed to to our function okay let's try let's give it some information about me uh, what's my name okay awesome so let me just just uh because i've i've limited this history to the previous to the last three messages let's just test it for a second so right now it remembers my name and let's tell it i i've got two kids they're doing great thank you for asking i love basketball and okay i'm from poland and i live in germany <laughs> look how silly it is have you been have you ever been to poland yes i'm from poland um so i've given it like five informations so let me just ask it how many kids do i have how many kids do i have okay it doesn't remember anymore and where do i live uh it's forgotten that's interesting again we're playing with the worst llama model which means that it may give us so really really poor answers i just want to show you the limitations of this of these models and they are still quite huge to be honest but the open source space of large language models is very new so don't get discouraged with that uh, just because like the implementation that you learned here is something that you can then reuse for for newer and better models because the implementation you learned here is something applicable for other models. So when the newer and more powerful models come, you can just reuse it and you'll basically get uh, better answers and better user experience. Okay, that's it for today. I just showed you how to use this amazing, amazing module from Gradio for chat interface and we used it to chat with Lama2. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something new. And yeah, uh, feel free to like and subscribe this video and even hit the bell on my profile so that you get notified when new videos come. And thank you for today.